Howdy folks, it's Zack, and welcome back to my Star Wars channel, and today I wanted to tackle a big question that came across my desk as I was getting ready for the uh, patch uh, 5.4 Star Wars The Old Republic Dev Notes patch 5.4 roadmap. God, that's a lot to say. And as I was getting ready for that today, basically, there was a really important question that came across my way, which was, is Star Wars The Old Republic dead? Is it a dead game? That's a really interesting question, and what I have found is that the players who are asking that are usually people who have played this game before and are still going to sites like mine or Delphi.net or the Bioware forums and looking at everything that gets released, and I don't think they're actually going to be a salty player. I think they're actually going there looking for hope that something about this game that they felt that was lacking before has now returned to bring them back or something along those lines. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about what constitutes a dead game? What, when is it that you feel you should probably bail out of a game that it is you're playing? When should you stay? And how do you recognize the difference between the two? So first off, let me just answer the question I started with because I don't want you to have to wait, you know, 10 full minutes until you get to the end. Is Star Wars Elder Republic dead? No, not in my opinion, not by a long shot. I'm still super invested. There's a lot of players who are still really invested, but let's actually talk about what my criteria are that I'm using for that. So first off, what is a dead game? I would say the first thing that's going to make your game die is a lack of player interest. If your players are not logging into your MMO and they are not actively playing that game in mass, you are probably going to lose that MMO. It's probably just going to die. That's really all there is to it. MMOs are made to be social, and if you don't have players playing it, you got nothing. The second thing I would say is lack of developer interest. If the people who created the game lose their interest in, create, in continuing to make the game, then you're going to lose your player base as, as a result. That's just the natural result of that. Players eventually get bored with, uh, with the game, and developers have to stay interested in creating this game and keeping it moving forward. They have to stay focused on it in order to make the game better. It leads us right into the next two bullet points, which really, you know, hurt the developer side of things. And the first thing is lack of funding. Uh, developers really only stay invested into the game as long as it's still profitable to do so. Sure, there are a few labor of love games out there, but not really when it comes to MMOs because MMOs are wicked expensive. You know, Star Wars, I think at the time, was the most expensive game ever created, and it was something to the tune of over $200 million were sunk into this game to make this happen. And that was all the voice acting and all the developer time. And the game now, to sustain profitability, it's pared down a lot. It doesn't have nearly the developer support it did, but the developers who are working on it are still you know, keeping in contact with the players and putting new notes out there and trying to do the best that they can. And that's something that I think is really admirable. So lack of funding, yep, that'll kill a game. Then the next one's the trickiest part. And this one is something to watch out for in every game that you play as an MMO, which is the lack of new innovations or originality. And this is really tricky because there's a formula that made this game successful. There's something that brought you to this game. And if you mess with that too much, you're gonna lose your core audience. On the other hand, if you never mess with it and you try to keep the game exactly as it is at all times throughout the entire experience, then you're also going to lose people as well because that just gets boring if the game never really changes and eventually at some point players leave. And that's the kiss of death for an MMO which needs a living community to continually log in. If they're not all still interested, if there's not something pulling them all in, that's pretty much the end of it. So why would call why would people call Star Wars a dead game? Well, I think at some point, and this is the major point I wanted to make with this video, and where I feel you start running into players who are salty is because this happened. It's what I call the separation between what players want from what the developers are actually creating. And this is where you still have players who are interested in playing the game. You still have developers who are interested in, in de you know, developing for the game. You still have money funding the game and you still have, you know, basically a living, thriving community and a look for new innovations. However, in Star Wars, we had definite periods of time and I'm gonna use rating as an example where there's a huge chunk of the player base who wanted a new raid. What they were getting was old raids that were being pumped up into higher difficulty levels and dropping new gear. Not really the same thing because if you've played the raid before on its difficulty levels, then you've played that raid. You know, even if it's tougher now, there might be a few new twists and turns, but it's still basically the same raid. And you can only really play those raids so many times before you kind of start losing your mind. And that's what I saw. My guild, uh, you know, Paramount, 
uh, was one of the guilds I was a part of. So was uh, another one was Return to Med Center. They just all the players kind of lost interest all about the same time when it just found out that hey, these new expansions are coming out. They're purely story based, and we're still not seeing any raids. Other interests took over. This is a legit concern. So you know, a lot of times when we see a player say this game died, it's usually because of something like that. Where no players were still playing the game. Yeah, developers are still developing for the game, but something that that player was specifically looking for was not being created. And because of that, that made them feel like the game wasn't the same game for them. And that made their attention look to other things to kind of hold it. And I'd also say, too, uh, some of the other comments I've seen about that this game is dead, I, I did want to address two of them, one of which I thought had no leg to stand on. And this was the argument that uh, the game, Star Wars The Old Republic, it isn't as big as it was at launch, and then it obviously means the game is dead or dying. I don't believe that at all. And I kind of went over this when I talked about the dedicated player fan base. It's because no MMO currently is the size it was at launch. <laughs> you know, saying, oh, you guys lost all these players, therefore your game is dying or dead. Well, yeah, okay, look, statistically speaking, yes, you know, even WoW lost millions of subscribers, but does that mean the game is dead? No, people by the millions still log into that game, and we still have thousands of subscribers for Star Wars The Republic Public who are pumping in cartel coins, uh, subscription fees, etc., and they keep that game going. So I don't actually think that's a legit concern to call Star Wars The Old Republic dead. However, there was one really interesting concern, and this is one I've come up with before in... Real Talk with Real Gamers with my co-hosts Penny and Xenoff and with some of our guest stars. And this one I actually think is kind of legit, which is that Star Wars is really tough to bring new innovations into. It's a great game, especially if you love Star Wars. The problem is it's really hard to introduce things like, say, a playable Wookiee class or a Grey Jedi class or a, a playable droid class because the game is designed for eight player classes that each have their own unique storyline and to fit into that any new race you you make has to be able to fit the character models for the can, the existing storylines this makes it really tough cuz yeah man i'd love to log in and play a rodian at some point and talk with the the rodian language or you know come in and play as a jawa or you know have a droid class that maybe can you know be a triple threat it can tank dps or heal but uh, you know, until we actually see that happen, uh, or excuse me, the, because of the way the game is designed, it's going to be a long time until we see something like that happen. Uh, okay, also, let's talk a little bit about, really quick, the state of Swartor right now. Because is the game dead? I don't think so. And why? It basically boils down to because we're seeing new raids come out. So for a lot of raiders, this is a really good thing. That's something that they've really wanted, they've really missed and now we're starting to see new raid bosses drop. Is it as fast as they'd like? Probably not, but at least it is coming. And the shows that developers are still concerned about addressing as many player needs as possible. It just also means that the size of the dev team isn't as big as it was at launch. They can't tackle everything all at the same time. So we saw two expansions which focused on story. Now we're seeing them focus a bit more on raids and group content and PvP. Uh, also, I'd say that in that same vein of thoughts, it's not just new raids. We're also seeing some new flashpoints be created. And like I said, you know, PvP is being focused in on as well a little bit. Uh, so there's still a lot of developer interest in this game, and there's still a very dedicated fan base. So right now, I would say, though, that Star Wars is still... It's a little bit more of a new player-friendly game. Uh, if you're looking for a lot of end game content, we're not seeing tons of it come out. We are seeing it come out, just not in massive, massive volumes. So I do think the game is a little bit tuned a more towards newer players rather than retaining older players. But uh, other than that, I do think the game is alive and well. So what do you think? Do you think that uh, Star Wars Old Republic is a living, breathing, continuing game? Or do you feel like the game is dying off? Uh, feel free to share your opinions below. And of course, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.